If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. To understand this question, we must first consider the following idea. The charge on any given length of the rod would equal rho times the area times the length of the rod, where rho is the charge per unit volume. It might help in order to understand this to look at the units of each of these three variables. So the rho, as stated, has a charge per unit volume, so that would be coulombs over meters cubed. Area, of course, has a unit of meters squared, and then length has a unit of just meters. So if we multiply meters squared by meters, we get meters cubed, which would cancel with the meters cubed on the bottom and give us a total unit of charge. And that's exactly what we're stating in this equation, is that charge is equal to those three variables multiplied together. Now, if we're dealing with a length that is very small, in essence, what's called a differential element, then we can let this length here be dx. That would simply represent the length of a very, very small section of the rod. So if we had a picture of the rod here and we cut out a very tiny section, in fact, so tiny, you probably can't even see that, the length of that section would be dx. And also, since we're looking at such a very tiny differential length, that means the charge would be a very small amount as well. So rather than using the traditional unit of q, we're going to use dq to represent that very minute amount of charge present on this differential length of the rod. So here is the charge equation written in its differential form. Now we need a second equation that relates the number of electrons to the charge. So here is that equation. We're going to let n equal the number of electrons. And the Q, of course, is going to be the total charge. So that would be in coulombs. And then the E is the standard charge on a single electron. That would be in coulombs per electron. So if we did a little dimensional analysis here, on the right side, we would have coulombs divided by coulombs per electron. The coulombs would cancel. This electron would actually flip up to the numerator. And indeed, we would get a unit of electrons. That's what we're trying to establish is this relationship to give the number of electrons, which again is simply the charge divided by E. Now, what we're going to do is make a substitution. We're going to take our differential amount of charge, that very, very tiny amount of charge. Here's the expression for it. We're going to substitute that in for this Q right here, which is also a charge. Now, technically, since we're using that differential amount of charge, we would have a differential amount of electrons, and again, a very tiny number of electrons. So we'll notice that we have a differential equation that relates the number of electrons to the length of rod under consideration. What we're going to do is integrate both sides of this equation so that we can change it from a differential form into the actual number of electrons present on the rod. Now, in part A, we note that the value of rho is uniform and constant. And so, since it's a constant, we're going to be able to pull it out of the integral. Also, the area of the rod is a constant, and so is the value of E. So, in fact, we can pull out the rho A over E as a constant to the outside of the integral. Now, of course, we need to integrate across the entire length of the rod. That way, we get the total number of electrons on the entire rod. So, we're going to go from a length of zero all the way up to the full length of the rod, which we will recall is two meters. So we can put two here. We're now ready to perform the integration. Now the integral of dn will just become n. And then the integral of dx will just be x. And then we'll evaluate it from zero to two, plugging in our upper limit first, followed by the lower limit and subtracting. Of course, gives us two minus zero. We can just simplify that to just two. And then we're just simply ready to plug in the known values to get the total number of electrons. We just have to be careful about the units. Some of them are not in their standard form. For example, rho is given to us as microcoulombs per meter cubed. So we're going to have to multiply this by 10 to the negative 6 in order to get it into coulombs per meter cubed. The area was not given in a standard form either. It was given in centimeters squared. Now most of us know that 1 meter corresponds to 100 centimeters. But centimeters and centimeters squared do not cancel, so what we have to do is square this conversion factor. And that gives us 4 times 10 to the minus 4, and now it's in the standard unit of meters squared. And then E, the charge on the electron, 
is a known value of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So we can crunch that down. And when we do so, we get approximately 2.0 times 10 to the 10. And that will be the number of electrons on the rod in part A. Now on to part B, which essentially is going to be the same thing. The only difference is that rho is no longer a constant. It varies depending on the length under consideration. So when we go to plug in rho into the formula, we're going to have to use this bx squared. So there we've made that substitution. Now we need to be careful. x squared is not a constant. It's a variable. So we actually have to put that back inside the integral. The b is a constant. It has a value given, so we can leave that outside. But the x squared, as mentioned, has to come inside the integral. We can now integrate the x squared by just using that general rule where we add 1 to the exponent to make it x cubed and then divide by that new exponent, so x cubed over 3. We'll plug in the upper limit. The lower limit is 0, so when we subtract it, that won't change the quantity, so we really just have to plug in the upper limit. We're now ready to plug in the known values. Notice that b was given in a non-standard form as well, so that needs to be written as negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6. The area was already converted earlier. And when you crunch that down, you should get approximately 1.33 times 10 to the power of 10 electrons. And that will be the correct answer to part B of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen.